of all the people whose stories are recounted in the Bible. I don't think there is anyone who is as often misinterpreted and frankly maligned as Thomas. Thomas, we read in John's chapter 20, beginning at verse 24, one of the twelve was not with the rest of the twelve when he appeared to them after his resurrection. So picking up in John's gospel, chapter 20, verse 24, it says, Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands. Reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. We see this account here of Thomas and for centuries we've referred to him as doubting Thomas. It's a real maligning of this man. Remember who Thomas is. Thomas was one of the original 12. It tells us that Jesus called the 12 to him and designated them apostles that they might be with him and that they might preach the message of the gospel. He was one of that 12. He was part of Jesus' innermost circle. This was a man who had seen Jesus perform wonderful miracles. He was there when Jesus walked on the water. He was there when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. He was there when Jesus fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fishes. He was there when Jesus raised the widow of Nain's son from the dead. He was there when they brought all the sick in a whole city to Jesus and Jesus healed them all. He was there. Thomas had seen it all. In later life, Thomas was the apostle who took the message of the gospel to the continent of India, brought about a mighty revival in India. Many, many people were saved, brought into the kingdom of heaven because of the ministry of Thomas. And he is a man who died a martyr's death because he was proclaiming the truth that Jesus is Lord and he is risen from the dead. This is not a man for us to dismiss lightly. And yet, we, we've come into the, the terminology, so, oh, you're just a doubting Thomas. That's what Thomas has become associated with, doubt. But I put it to you today that this is unfair to Thomas. Thomas, as I say, is a man who had seen these mighty, mighty miracles. But Thomas is not a man just to take other people's word for it. Thomas is a man who in later life, remember, is prepared to lay down his own life to proclaim to people that Jesus is risen from the dead. He's not just going to take anybody's word for it. He wants to know it for himself. In other words, what he's saying is, I know that if I proclaim this gospel, if I proclaim that Jesus is risen from the dead, then I may have to die for this message because I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Thomas knew what it would cost if he was going to proclaim this message and he wanted to know that he wasn't going to lay his life down in vain. This is a man of great courage, great bravery, a man who was willing to lay his life down for the name of Jesus. But somehow we get this idea that Thomas was lacking in faith. And the reason we get that is because 
of verse 29, where Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Somehow or other, we have decided from that verse that Thomas's faith was weaker, was less than the faith who have not seen and yet have believed. Well, that would indicate that the faith of the other apostles was also weaker than ours because they had also seen and they had believed because they had witnessed the risen Christ. This is not saying that the, the faith of those who have not seen is greater in any way than the faith of those who saw with their physical eyes the risen Christ. It's simply saying this is a different set of circumstances. You are the 12, my eyewitnesses. You are those who saw me when I was alive, who saw me crucified and now have physically seen me risen from the dead. And you are to go out as eyewitnesses and proclaim this truth. Well, the fact is that now 2000 odd years later, we do not physically see the risen Jesus. Why? Because Jesus has ascended into heaven. So our faith is not based on whether we have physically seen Jesus. Our faith is based on something else. And our faith is based on what we have heard of the word of God. The Bible tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith does not originate with us. Our faith is no greater or lesser than the faith of the apostles. How do I say that? Well, if you turn to Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, the Apostle Paul says this, For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. And then if you turn to the book of Ephesians and chapter 2 in verse 8, the Apostle Paul writes this. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. We are saved through faith in Jesus Christ. And that faith has not come through us trying to work it up. That faith has come through hearing the word of God, that word that is living and active, that word that is breathed by the Holy Spirit. That is where faith enters into our hearts and we believe unto salvation in Jesus Christ. That faith has not come from us. Thomas's faith, yes, it comes from seeing the risen Christ. But it's no greater or lesser than ours. There are many who saw Jesus and yet chose to disbelief. There are many who have seen the evidence of Jesus changing people's lives today and yet they choose to disbelieve. They choose to go their own way. We have a choice to make. Jesus turns to Thomas and he says to him, do not be unbelieving, but believing. That's the choice we have to make. God comes and he offers us faith and we have a choice to make. Are we going to be unbelieving or are we going to be believing? It's the same sort of choice that Jesus made to Jairus's, to, to Jairus when he came to raise his daughter from the dead. He says to him, do not be afraid, only believe, only believe. Thomas believed enough to lay down his life for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our faith is no greater or lesser. Let's not denigrate Thomas and say this was a man who doubted. The same faith is in us that was in Thomas because it comes from God. But let me tell you this, that same faith means that you can overcome obstacles in your life. That same faith means that should you be called to, you will be able to lay down your life for Christ. 
The same faith is in you that was in Thomas. That means that you yourself in the name of Jesus can do the things that Jesus said you can do. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can lay your hands on the sick and know they will recover. You can provide. You can do all of the things that Jesus calls you to do. The disciples went everywhere preaching the gospel. And Jesus himself worked alongside them, confirming his word with signs and wonders. Thomas was one of that twelve. Thomas was one of the disciples who went about preaching the gospel. And Jesus himself worked alongside Thomas, confirming his word with signs and wonders. The same faith is in you that is in Thomas, because it is not your own faith. It is the faith that God has in his grace given to you. It is the faith by which you are saved and is your faith in Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with you. The evangelist Daniel Kalender is quoted as saying, I don't have a problem with miracles. Miracles are the easiest part of my job because I don't do them. The faith for, 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 for performing miracles is in you as it was in Thomas. So lay hold of that faith which Jesus has placed in you today and see what great things the Lord will do in your life and through your life. God bless you.